Thank you, Bill. And we'll move from the village to the future. Talk about a nanomachine uh, turning uh, science fiction into reality. Hal IT is about here. Okay, so we, so we all familiar with uh, big machines that uh, rely on motor to convert energy from mechanical motion and perform different tasks. Now imagine you take this big machine and you shrink it by a million or a billion and you get this little submarine that can swim in your blood vessel and uh, detect and cure, uh, destroy cancer cell. Now this is not my idea, this is long enough. If you old enough, you remember the fantastic voyage in 1966 on this nano vehicle that cruised the blood vessel and locating disease cell and destroying them. If you want to realize the vision of the fantastic vo voyage, we need to overcome different challenges. How to power this nano shuttle, nano vehicle, and how to steer it to its destination. And we'll talk about nano motors that are used for this and for many other applications. Unfortunately, and as you'll see also in the next talk, physics were completely different in the nano scale. This little nano swimmer have to use completely different swimming strategies because of the viscosity effects that dominate the nanoscale at low Reynolds number environment and also because of the Brownian thermal random motion. So our design principle of big swimmer are completely different than this nano swimmer. Now, nature has addressed it uh, with a million of years of evolution by developing very sophisticated biological motor that overcome these viscosity forces and Brownian motion by moving on this nano track or nano highway. So this is kinesin, is a protein, a walking protein or myosin in the muscle. They walk on this filament kind of track guided movement to overcome the viscosity effect and the Brownian motion. This is nature. Our approach, and we'll talk about the next 10 minutes, about different fuel-driven nanomotor, fuel-free nanomotor, based primarily on nanowires that are propelled chemically or magnetically or electrically. So we will start with the chemically powered nanowire using a fuel, hydrogen peroxide, and we can engineer the composition of the motor, this nanowire, the composition of the fuel, and get very powerful and very fast nanomotor. So here we have different nanomotor. This is the world fastest one because you have optimal composition with nanotube, optimal fuel. And as you see in the movie, it's a very fast movie. So you can see this guy go. So it's moving. It, so it took this, uh, let's see it uh, again if you missed it. It's too fast anyway, but if you look at the photo image, the final, this is the photo image of this guy, which the optimal composition and optimal fuel. And he's only one or two micrometer. He ran about 95 micrometer per second, which translate to 50 body lengths per second. Now this guy from Jamaica, bold, he ran the 100 meter at 9.58 seconds, which is only five body lengths per second. So my little guy ran 50 body lengths per second <laughs> because of the optimal fuel and optimal composition. So again, two micrometer at 100 micrometer per second. So we have a powerful uh, nanomotor. Now we need to navigate it. We need precise motion control to perform different tasks we need to know to accelerate it, to start the engine, to navigate it, to steer it, to stop it. And we develop different strategies based on different stimuli, temperature, magnetic, electrically, chemically, how to navigate and control the speed and the direction. For example, we'll start with the temperature control. Here we have a temperature pulse. You'll see soon in the video that the room temperature, it moves slowly. You pulse the temperature, it starts to accelerate, and we can slow it down. So it's a temperature pulse. Again, 
watch this movie, room temperature, 12 micrometer per second pulse, Hop. 50 micrometer per second and stopping now off. And it's unlike the Toyota, we can slow down and instantaneously <laughs> if you watch it again. So it's reversible. Slow, fast, and slow, we can stop it uh, upon request. So this is a temperature control, very reversible. And this allows us, this is a magnetic control where we can generate very complex uh, moving pattern. Again, uh, you can see four nanomotor moving at the UCSD, or we can do CalIT or UCI, as you needed to create different complex uh, movement uh, patterns. So this is magnetically guided, uh, but they are all chemically powered, fuel-driven nanomotor. So we have a lot of power. We have a advanced motion control. Can we combine it to pick a cargo and to drag it and to drop it and to pick another cargo? So the next video will show the ability of this little guy to pick this uh, big cargo, to drag, transport it, to release it, and go and pick another uh, cargo. So watch again. Here, picking the cargo, carrying, uh, transferring to the destination, dropping it, and go and picking another cargo. And this cargo is big, it's about five times bigger. This is 10 micrometer compared to two micrometer. Again, if you miss it, so Another capability is a operation in biological uh, fluid, like a blood or urine. For many of the biomedical applications, we need rockets that can propel in a body fluid like this undiluted serum. You see one second time interval. This is a micro rocket, which have a bubble mechanism. You'll see oxygen bubbles that propel it, make it independent on the environment as you'll see in the next video. So watch this uh, micro rocket. Here it go, you can see the bubble all in undiluted urine move uh, conveniently and you can perform different operation, drug delivery and other uh, diagnostic application as we will see. So this is all fuel uh, based nanomotor, a rocket or wire. This is a micro tube where the bubble exit from the tube and, or nano wires. We can also go fuel free. Many of these biological applications, we need to eliminate the fuel in the body, in vivo application. So here we are inspired from nature, try to have artificial flagella. This is the nature uh, helical bacterial flagella. We develop an artificial flagella that can be magnetically controlled and move uh, without the fuel as you'll see in the next video. Here is my little swimmer with mag rotating magnetic field. We stop the magnet, take a rest. Then we start the engine again, and it goes again. So it's a little flagella with a helical tail. It can go also backward. Here it will go reverse. Reverse, we stop the magnetic field, uh, take a little rest. Then we start the engine again, goes, and you go again, and you can go backward again, and demand. And this is all fuel-free, either magnetically or electrically. We can also combine different propulsion modes in this in a hybrid nanomotor, which can go both chemically and magnetically. Just take the same magnetic swimmer and put this catalytic platinum end that you can go chemically propel, and this gives us an hybrid motor that is powered by two modes, chemically and magnetically, and you can switch the mode, the operation, in response to changing condition. Like if you're running out of fuel, you start the magnetic field and so on. So this is our latest hybrid. We can also inspire by the grouping and the swarming behavior of animals like these ants and form swarm in school of our artificial synthetic micro rocket. So here we chemically trigger the formation of school, as you'll see in the next video, to mimic the collective behavior of animals. So you'll see the next video where we spike hydrazine to this solution. This is gold microparticle. We spike the hydrazine, and now we start to form swarm and group. We are merging into larger school, and so on. We get a nice organization of this microparticle triggered by the addition of hydrazine. And this, again, mimic the collective uh, swarming action of animals. 
So we have a lot of capability. What we can do with this? Again, we are dreaming about drug delivery. We will see some example of sensing, nanofabrication, cleaning the environment, this Gulf spill, and so on. So we'll go into the biosensing. Here we develop a motion-based sensor for pathogen based upon speed dependent or distance dependence. So these are different concentration of the uh, E. coli pathogen. So this is DNA detection. If you watch the video, you can see different speeds for different concentration of the pathogen. So we get a well-defined concentration dependent, which is simply can be visualized by a microscope. So again, just different concentration, it's increased proportionally, and you can detect the pathogen directly without any purification. Drug delivery, we talk about the fantastic voyage. Here it was collaboration with Professor Zeng from the Cancer Center. Again, we have is a, a nanoparticle loaded with a doxorubicin. You have different size of the nanocarrier, therapeutic particle. And as you'll expect from stock law, the speed decreases. The larger the particle, the slower the speed. And you can see the next video demonstrating this uh, size dependent. So you'll see this is the large particle slow, the smaller part, all loaded with the anti-cancer drug again and again, and so on. So again, this is what you expect from physics. Uh, we can apply this technology for a nanofabrication, for patterning nanostructure. We can do UCSD, uh, Cal IT again, by having a functionalized nanomotor, have localized reaction that have localized deposition along the pathway, similar to what people use with atomic force scanning probe. We can eliminate the tip, go tipless by having localized reaction, let's say, of an enzyme predetermined pass and creating these nano patterns. And we can also dream about nano surgery. After this big lunch, we can swim, clean all the cholesterol and the clogging in our artery. So let me close by thanking my coworker, postdoc, student, undergraduate, graduate for making this possible, then the partner of nano engineering, Cal IT for the facility, and thank you all for your attention. Thank you very much. Thank you.